So here we shall discuss about electric field due to a finite line of charge which is uniformly distributed with a charge which is positive charge and let lambda be the linear charge density. So we need to find the electric field at this point say it is O and here to find this we consider a small element which is of size dx and the electric field due to this element at this point is de and we may resolve it into two components one is cos component and one is sine component assuming that the line joining this element is subtending an angle theta with this vertical line so now the electric field i can express de as assuming that this is a distance x and this perpendicular distance is r from here to here the perpendicular distance is r so that it is a right angle triangle this is x this is r so this becomes root of r square plus x square i mean to say this is root of r square plus x square so that the electric field becomes k dq by root of r square plus x square whole square so finally it becomes k dq by r square plus x square so now coming to dq i can express dq as lambda dx because i already assumed that lambda is the linear charge density and dx is the length of this element so dq becomes lambda dx which is the charge of the element so that the electric field de becomes k lambda dx by r square plus x square so now coming to de cos theta so it becomes de cos theta is equal to k lambda dx by r square plus x square into cos theta so this is the component of electric field due to this element along this direction and assuming there are many such components so it would be a total of uh, which is obtained by integration so i would say the electric field along this direction due to all such elements is something which is perpendicular to this line of charge so i would say it is electric field which is perpendicular to the line of charge i would use this symbol and it would be obviously integration of de cos theta so that it becomes integral of k lambda dx by r square plus x square into cos theta so now here the point is the dx which is this element i have to express uh, if i take this as theta x is r tan theta so i can write dx as r secant square theta d theta differentiating we get this so that this i can use here right and coming to the denominator also it is r square plus x square again i can substitute this x square as r tan theta whole square so it becomes e perpendicular is equal to integral of k lambda dx i got there as r secant square theta into d theta divided by it was r square plus r square tan square theta into cos theta so so now let me rub this
So here E perpendicular is equal to integral of k lambda r secant square theta into cos theta into d theta divided by denominator I can take common r square it becomes 1 plus tan square so I can straight away cancel this 1 plus tan square with secant square because as we know 1 plus tan square is nothing but secant square I will cancel this term with secant square and also one r is here and one r square is here again I can cancel this term so it becomes e perpendicular is equal to integral I will bring constant also outside which is k so k in k lambda by r integral cos theta d theta so now I did not write the limits of integration so let us consider what is to be put as the limits of integration so I have already assumed here in the diagram that this part of the line of charge is subtending an angle beta and the rest of the line of charge is subtending an angle alpha so if I take sign convention this would be negative and that would be positive so the limits of integration would be minus beta to plus alpha minus beta to plus alpha so if I write I can write everywhere so right from the beginning it would be minus beta to plus alpha so E perpendicular will be k lambda by r into now integration of cos is sine so I will write sine theta with limits minus beta to alpha it becomes E perpendicular is equal to k lambda by r into sine alpha minus of sine minus beta and as we know that sine of minus theta is minus sine theta so here minus of minus becomes plus so I would write directly so it becomes sine alpha plus sine beta so finally the formula would become E perpendicular is equal to k lambda by r into sine alpha plus sine beta so this is only the perpendicular component still we have to calculate the parallel component I mean to say perpendicular means which is acting in this direction due to all the elements constraint so in a similar manner we can consider for parallel component right now here we will continue for the component of electric field which is acting parallel to the line of charge that means I mean to say along the sine component see this d sine theta is only the component due to this element but there will be any such elements so considering the electric field due to all such elements there must be a total electric field which is parallel to the line of charge so that now I would say the total electric field parallel to the line of charge must be E parallel is equal to integral of DE sin theta so now I can express it becomes integral of K lambda dx by R square plus x square into sin theta so as earlier we have discussed that we had x is equal to r tan theta so that dx is r secant square theta d theta so I can replace this dx as r secant square theta and I can replace the term x here as r tan theta so it would become integral of k lambda into r secant square theta d theta by r square plus r square 
tan square theta into sin theta. So it becomes e parallel is equal to integral of k lambda r secant square theta into sin theta into d theta divided by r square into 1 plus tan square. So as we have done earlier also, we can make a cancellation for the term secant square and 1 plus tan square because 1 plus tan square is secant square. So straight away I will cancel here and one r term will cancel. So it becomes e parallel is equal to I will bring the constant outside it is k lambda by r into integral sin theta with limits. Now I have to again take the same limits as I said in the last case of perpendicular it is minus beta 2 plus alpha. So it becomes minus beta 2 plus alpha. So now this is integral of sine as you know it is minus cos. So it becomes e parallel is equal to k lambda by r into minus cos with limits minus beta to alpha. So it becomes e parallel is equal to k lambda by r into I will invert the limits because there is a minus sign I can do that I can invert the limits so it becomes cos theta with limits alpha to minus beta so it becomes e parallel is equal to k lambda by r into cos minus beta minus cos alpha so e parallel is k lambda by r into cos beta minus cos alpha. Here we can easily understand cos of minus beta is nothing but like cos minus theta is always cos theta. So cos minus beta I have written directly as cos beta. So it becomes k lambda by r into cos beta minus cos alpha. So we need to understand that the electric field at this point is having components which is e perpendicular in this direction just before we have this derived that and e parallel in this direction okay but this component which is parallel to the line of charge would become zero under the case when either of these angles means alpha and beta become equal like for example if this is 30 degrees and that side is also 30 degrees so in that case i would have cos 30 minus cos 30 it would become zero so this component of parallel would exist only when these two are unequal right so uh, we can now summarize what we have done till now taking only these two the total electric field at this point we can find out so now this is uh, the final summary of whatever we have been doing till now so the line of charge is as usual but this time I have taken the electric field uh, which is one is parallel to the line of charge and one is perpendicular to the line of charge and these two are giving rise to a resultant electric field at this point which is ER and as because they are perpendicular to one another I can straight away say that E resultant is root of E perpendicular square plus E parallel square. So whatever values we get in either of these formulas we substitute and we can get the resultant electric field at this point and we may just note that E parallel would be 0 if alpha is equal to beta. So this we need to keep in mind. So we, uh, the problem becomes more easier if it is symmetric on either side that means the angles are equal we need to only calculate the perpendicular component cos component becomes means a parallel component becomes 0. Okay, and uh, if you still want to express the electric field in terms of vectors, so for example, this is along the negative x axis, I would have put minus i, and this was along the positive y axis, I would have put plus j. If at all we want to express in vector form, right? 
and still if we want to make how much angle the resultant is making and even that you can calculate by putting some angle here okay and e r bar would be e parallel into minus i plus e perpendicular into g so this is the vector notation and just using this even we can get the angle made by this vector with the vertical direction right okay